Hello everyone and welcome again to your JavaFX8 tutorial. Today we're going to review some concepts about nodes and bounds. This will be a very short video but uh, with very important concepts in order to understand how the nodes are organized inside our root node. So let's start. Okay, so talking about nodes, a node will be every component uh, that you add to the, your uh, to your stage uh, in your application, and we will have two types of nodes. The first one will be a branch node. A branch node is called a branch node because it can contain more nodes. You can place more nodes inside of of, of them. And some examples of this branch node will be, for example, our root node. And inside the root node, you can place another components, such as a button, or maybe, uh, I don't know, a menu, or maybe another, another shape. Another example could be a menu. And a menu is a branch node because you can uh, place a submenu inside of it, like this example here. Okay. On the other hand, we will have leaf nodes, and leaf nodes are called this way because uh, we are not able to place or to put another nodes inside of a leaf node. And all the leaf nodes come from the uh, class, the shape class. So, for example, a rectangle cannot contain another another shape, a line or a circle. Or another rectangle. Okay. So this is why they are called leaf nodes. So now let's see how uh, they are um, organized, how we can uh, organize or we, we can arrange those those nodes inside our our root node. Okay, so in order to better understand what is the best way to uh, arrange our components inside the application and I created this code for you guys and this code will have the basic uh, structure of a JavaFX application uh, if you're not familiar with the, the basic structure please uh, review video number one of this tutorial review the last last video and we will um, we have checked all the basic concepts inside of it okay so Inside this basic structure, we have our class and we have the start method, and also we have the we're defining the title of the primer stage, and we are defining our root node, and we are placing more more uh, components inside this root node this time. Okay, so we will review now three uh, the three type of uh, bounds that we can we can get from a component okay so let's define a bound a bound will be a rectangle around the the node that will define the uh, where it where it is, is placed inside the, the the root node okay so we have three type of bounds okay the first one will be the layout bound the second one will be the local bound and the third one will be the parent bound the parent bound Okay, so a bound, since a bound is a rectangle, we will find in this bound three uh, three properties. Okay, let's see the application. Okay, three properties. The first one will be the uh, x, and the second one will be the y. These two numbers represents the uh, the initial coordinate for the or the start point of the rectangle. And also we will have the width and the height. Okay, so this to define the width and the height of the of the rectangle of the, um, the bounding rectangle of the of a, of a shape. Okay, so the first bound will be the layout bound. Okay, let's go to a slide in order to understand what a a layout bound is. Um, a layout bound is uh, is um, defined or will be defined uh, by the shape, the 
we have a rectangle will be the rectangular shape plus the stroke a non-zero stroke we define a stroke of uh, 10, 10 pixels uh, that will be uh, taken into consideration uh, to define the, the layout bounds okay in this case we have a stroke a thin stroke here and our layout bounds will start from here and will finish to here okay let's go to netlins again okay and we are defining here we are getting the uh, the x and the y of the initial coordinates of the uh, layout bounds and the width and the height in order to display these numbers here okay so now we can see that this rectangle that we have defined in our in our application it has a, a bold stroke okay and it starts at this in this point which is uh, an x of 95 and a y of 45 and the width will be 160 pixels the height will be 85 85 uh, pixels okay. it's taking into consideration the stroke the second uh, kind of bound will be a local bound which we are defining here and again we have uh, our four numbers the x y which represent the start point and the width and the height of the of this bound this rectangular bound okay so let's go to the slide again and we see that a local bound is defined by the shape plus the stroke plus an effect or a creep okay and this rectangle here around this other rectangle will be the local bound of this shape as you can see it's taking it's considering the shape plus the stroke okay plus an effect in this case we're using a drop shadow effect okay so this local bound in our application will start if we have the effect here we we'll start from here, for example, and yeah, as you, as you can see, it's different from a layout bound, and we'll finish uh, here. Where is the where the where is the place where you can see the shadow? Okay. And that's why you can see the, a difference between the layout bound and the local bound, because the local bound is also considering the effect applied to the to this this shape okay and let's review the last type of, of, of bound which will be the parent parent bounds so parent bounds um, as well have the initial point with the x and the y here and the width and the height and let's go let's go to the to the slide okay so we have here the bounds in parent are defined by the shape, the stroke, an effect, and also a transformation. And a transformation will be a rotation, or can be a scaling, or a translation. Okay. In this case, in this example, we are rotating the same rectangle here. We're rotating it, and we can see that the bounds in parent will be the rectangle around our shape considering the shape, the stroke, the effect and also the transformation ok so let's go to Netlinks again and let's check our application in this case parent bounds are the same as the local bounds because we haven't applied any transformation to this to this node so now, now let's click uh, rotate and as you can see, the purple rectangle represents the bounding rectangle of the parent bounds. And you can see that it has changed. It is, um, the initial point has, has changed. And also the width 
and the height height are different okay so we can keep rotating this rectangle and you can see how it how the parent bounds are changing okay another thing that you should uh, should see is that layer bounds and local bounds will never change they will always be the same okay because they are considering uh, the effects of the shape of the of the original shape of the original node and also the the original uh, size of the node they are not considering any transformation so this is the original position of the of the node and uh, as you can see the bouncy parent now are the same again as the local bounds because they are in the same position if we rotate again we will change change them again okay so my suggestion would be uh, to use only uh, a parent bounds only when you are planning to 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 place nodes around a node that will uh, that will be transformed that will be rotated or that will be translated okay and use always local bounds if you want if you're not uh, if you are not uh, planning to to transform a shape use always local bounds and also if you have a, an effect use always local bounds if you're not applying any effect or any transformation to the to your uh, your node you can use layout bounds and use them you know uh, if you want to know where to place uh, another nodes around this this original shape okay so those are the suggestions uh, that I have uh, regarding bounds okay and also we have here the functionality of the of the button we are updating here the 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 bounds when we are clicking on the rotate button okay and we are also drawing another rectangle using the the bounce in local and the bounce in parent okay so this is uh this is how we can uh, know how to better place our components inside our application and that's it for today guys so thank you for watching this video and please don't forget to watch the next video which will be about lines how to create lines we are designing a car and by using different shapes and we are starting with lines so please like subscribe and share and have a good one